This is part three of a three-part video series in which I try to answer the question which clearance and creepage distances should I use in my PCB design. In part one we looked at different IEC EN safety standards and we decided that IEC 62368 was a standard that applies best to our scenario. Part two discussed the parameters and definitions that determine the clearance and creepage distance values to use. In this video we will use the data we found in part 2 with the tables from the standard document uh, to calculate the clearance and creepage distances. Now this is my personal interpretation of a super complex subject and so I may be wrong or mistaken on certain things. If you know better, please leave a comment. This video is based solely on own research and interpretation. All the data, numbers and values presented in this video are informative only and may not be used without verification by an established authority. Responsibility for failing compliance testing, damage to equipment, personal accidents or whatever is declined. In the previous video we came up with the following data. The working voltage is 240 volt RMS and 340 volt peak. Insulation type is reinforced, over voltage is 2.5 kV, pollution degree 2, material group or CTI 3A and altitude correction 1. To determine the clearance distance between the primary and the secondary circuits uh, there are two procedures and you must take the highest value of the two. Procedure 1 uses table 10 in my draft document and we find 3.6 mm for our values. Procedure 2 uses table 14 and there we find 3 mm. Why the two values are different is unclear to me, but we must use the highest value of the two, so we continue with 3.6 mm. In my draft standard, the creepage distance between the primary and secondary circuit is obtained from table 17. We find 2.5 mm, but this is for basic and supplementary insulation only. Since reinforced insulation comprises both, this value must be doubled and we get 5 mm. Note that this value also works for materials in the 3B group. The creepage distance is always larger than or equal to the clearance distance. If you stick to 5 mm creepage distance, then the clearance distance will be 5 mm too instead of 3.6 mm and you are good for altitudes up to 4500 m. A minimum creepage distance of 5 mm can have an impact on the components you are allowed to use in your circuit. As I said at the beginning, I have a relay in my circuit. Relays come in all shapes and sizes and the very common one is what I call the G5L type. This type is suitable for switching the mains voltage, but its common contact is in between the coil contacts. The clearance between these contacts is a bit more than 5 mm. Mounting the relay on a PCB requires solder pads and these will make it almost impossible to respect the required creepage distance of 5 mm. Using what I call a 90 mm type relay with 5 mm pitch for the switch contacts solves this problem. You can increase the creepage distance by adding slots or grooves between conductors. In our scenario the slot or groove should be at least 1 mm wide to be taken into account. Then the creepage distance is measured around the slot. Now you can respect the minimum clearance distance of 3.6 mm while having a much larger creepage distance. However, slots have no influence on clearance, so you are limited in altitude to 2000 m. For the clearance and creepage distances inside the primary part, for instance around the relay switch contacts, we use these values. Working voltage 240 volts RMS or 340 volts peak, insulation type functional, which means basic, over voltage 2.5 kV, pollution degree of 2, material group or CTI 3A and altitude correction 1. These are the same as before, except for the insulation type, which is now functional instead of reinforced and for which we should use the basic insulation values. For clearance we now find 1.8 mm and for creepage 2.5 mm. 
As before, if the clearance is also 2.5 mm, like the creepage, then it's good for altitudes up to 4500 meters. Unfortunately, this is not a complete story, as there is also a frequency component to be considered. Up to frequencies of 30 kHz, the values I mentioned are probably ok. I haven't really figured out the frequency part, but my interpretation is that this is only an issue when the high frequency working voltage has values of 1 kV or more. Table 11 in my draft 4B document starts at 600 volts with a clearance of 0.14 mm. This value is much lower than the 1.5 mm clearance obtained from the uh, up to 30 kHz table, and you must use the highest value. For the creepance distance, the situation is the same, suggesting that in my scenario I can ignore the frequency part. There is also an NXX, which provides an alternative method for determining clearances for installations in circuits connected to an AC mains not exceeding 420 volts peak or 300 volts RMS. All things equal, using the data from this annex uh, we find for reinforced insulation a clearance distance of 4 mm instead of 3.6 mm. For functional or basic insulation uh, it is 2 mm instead of 1.8 mm. I am not sure uh, how to interpret these values. It seems that annex X allows equipment that already uh, conforms to IEC 60664 to also conform to IEC 62368. IEC 60664 is about insulation for equipment within low voltage supply systems. Again, making the clearances the same as the creepage distances determined for my scenario, they also comply with NXX, and so I am probably good. It is possible to improve the level of protection by applying coating to the board. A coating may decrease the creepage distance requirements. However, such a coating cannot be any coating, and no, it must be conformal. Conformal to what? Well, conformal to IEC 61086-1 coatings for loaded printed wire boards. I will not go into that, just remember that the solder mask routinely applied to most PCBs is not a conformal coating, as it does not cure or polymerize, it just dries and scratches easily. And as a matter of fact, it may even introduce pollution due to dust particles and microscopic air bubbles. Therefore it may be desirable to omit the solder mask on high voltage parts of the board to be sure of the CTI value of the surface. Somewhere at the beginning of this video I said it is very hard to find useful clearance and creepage numbers on the internet. This is true, but if you look really hard then you can find some. Once you know the keywords to search on, you can dig up some usable advice. This way I found a website named creepage.com. This is a free online calculator for clearance and creepage distances according to IEC 6950, the predecessor of IEC 62368. It does not take altitude into account, nor frequency, but the values I got from it are almost the same as those found by working through the document. For a better understanding of IEC 62368-1, it is highly recommended to consult IEC 62368-2, which contains explanatory information related to IEC 62368-1. I found a draft of this document online somewhere. The link is in the description below. It helps a lot in understanding what it is all about and why these values and things are the way they are, but it doesn't make things a whole lot easier to understand. As we have seen, extracting something as simple as clearance and creepage distances from an IEC normative document is not easy. It already takes a lot of time, patience and concentration just to come up with some plausible numbers. And then these are just your own interpretation of the standard. Also, clearance and creepage only concern a fraction of the standard that covers much, much more things. Working through the 380 or so pages and understanding them all is a tough, if not impossible job. And chances are that when you take your device to a test lab for IEC 62368 compliance testing, they will find other issues too. Testing costs money, but at least you get data and results that you can use to fix your device. Therefore, there is really no point in also spending money on buying a copy of the standard, unless you have trouble falling asleep. 
Okay, that's it. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click or tap the bell button. Thank you for watching.